Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha TV's coverage of Budget 2021-22. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira. Well, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Monday presented the budget for the fiscal year 2021-22, which she said was prepared under circumstances like never before. She said that the government, however, was fully prepared to revive economic growth in the country. This budget provided every opportunity for the economy to capture the pace it needs for sustainable growth, is what she said. Uh, the union minister said that budget stands on six pillars, health and wellness, physical and financial capital, development for inclusive development for aspiring India to infuse new life into human capital, innovation and R&D, and uh, minimum government and maximum governance. Recalling the Atmanirbar packages announced for the people in view of the COVID-19 pandemic, Sita Raman said that the three stimulus packages provided last year were like five mini-budgets before the budget for this financial year. The minister announced a budget of 35,000 crore rupees to vaccines against the coronavirus pandemic. Over the next 30 minutes, we will analyse the highlights, highlights of the budget. Joining me on the programme now are... Uh, Sanjay Agarwal, President, PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Also with me is Shubhamoy Bhattacharji, Consulting Editor of the Business Standard. And also on the program right now, Vineet Agarwal, President, Asocham. And Ashok Kumar Jha, also a you know, former member of the Finance Ministry, joins us on the program. He was the Finance Secretary, Ministry of Finance, Government of India. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of this special telecast. All right. So, Mr. Jha, let me start the program with you first. You know, what were the three key highlights, key three takeaways for you from the budget? Well, I think the first most important highlight was what the budget did not contain. Uh, that is, I, I think that was more important or equally important uh, along with the elements of the budget. See, people were expecting some level of taxation somewhere, whether it was in the form of a COVID sense or in the form of uh, wealth tax, etc. Since that didn't happen, it, it really cheered everybody. The second highlight, I think, is that the focus was very, very strong on investment in terms of investment in infrastructure. The outlay for health has been increased. And the, there is a provision for uh, setting up textile parks. So these are all, uh, you know, investment-oriented uh, measures. And the third most important uh, thing was about uh, the finance, the, the cleaning up of the financial system in terms of recapitalization of banks, setting up of a new DFI, and, uh, you know, which would then be lending long-term I think these were the three main highlights. Absolutely. All right. Mr. Sanjay Agarwal, let me come across to you now. You know, from an industry point of view, from an industry standpoint, what were the key takeaways for you? I think the major takeaway for me is the stress on infrastructure and investment. I think that is something that cannot be stressed enough. Our PSD chamber has been talking about this for the last full one year during the pandemic times, especially during the pre-budget discussions. We have been requesting uh, that we must front load the national infrastructure pipeline expenditure uh, as much as possible. We are looking at 111 lakh crore of a pipeline, which is to be, you know, that is to be invested over the period of next five years. And at the very least, even if you do an equal expenditure, we need to spend 22 lakh crores uh, approximately every year. Probably we need to further front load it. So on that front, I think. Uh, the budget has come about to be on a very, very positive note, very positive direction. I think all possible aspects are being taken care of. The budgetary provisions themselves are uh, talking about uh, 5 lakh crore plus. I think it's 35% increase over the last year's CAPEX. On top of that, there is a, 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 a large amount of investment that one hopes will come from the proposed new mega uh, development financial institution into which the government will invest 20,000 crores. But end of the day, we are looking at 5 lakh crores of funding being available. What we really hope is that this becomes the venture capital or the seed capital 
for a lot of other infrastructure investment to happen in the country uh, because right now what the economy needs is a hefty injection of investment uh, that is going to give us not only uh, a very good multiplier of GDP which is uh, estimated at 2.5 times the investment made but also is going to be the best possible solution to the employment worries that we have. I think the investment in infrastructure, whether you build roads, railways, uh, or uh, ports, or whatever, I think all of that is going to add hugely to mm -hmm. our uh, our uh, unemployment uh, uh, issues to being uh, sorted out, as also the GDP growth. So all said and done, I think the focus on infrastructure, and then, sorry, the, the, the third major part of that is the all possible means of uh, uh, raising finance in addition to the budget, in, ad, uh, in addition to the, uh, to the DFI being formed, is the total stress on disinvestment. I think we have not been very uh, successful in our disinvestment for the last two years. We did less than 50% uh, in the year ended March 20. Right. The year ended March 21, we expect just... Uh, uh, 10 or 15 percent of the target being done. But this year's targets on disinvestment are very huge. And we are looking at uh, some major mega disinvestments, which include BPCL and which will include uh, uh, Container Corporation and we, which include Air India. Right. On top of that, the government is very clear about uh, disinvesting surplus land, sure. for which a special company is being formed. I think the SPV is being formed, and that has been a major station of our chamber, that we must form an SPV, which should take care of all the technical issues about ownership of land and titles of land, right. which is vested in various PSUs. So all of this said and done is uh, something very, very uh, positive and forward-looking. Absolutely. Our, uh, All right. Uh, Shubhamai, let me take this particular aspect forward with you of disinvestment. And do you expect the target that has been set to be met? Because in the past, we've seen that the targets, it has been difficult to meet some of the uh, uh, targets that have been outlaid. That's true. I mean, uh, disinvestment is always a, a game that the government has to play with the market. And uh, the government, any government isn't, isn't particularly good one at playing that game. This year, of course, they've got a huge advantage, uh, <clears throat> an I, LIC IPO, given LIC's valuation, that would immediately mean something like 80 to 90,000 crore at just one shot. Absolutely. So that, that would immediately do half the disinvestment uh, uh, target. Plus, if you've got BPCL coming through, you're home. So essentially, it's just two transactions this year, which will uh, which essentially would, uh, would sort of be the disinvestment thing. And if uh, once these two happen, and since IPCL, uh, since LIC valuation is already almost done, um, so give another few months for the IPO red heading prospectus and others to be filed. Uh, shouldn't be a problem this year. I mean, the, 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 you just ride it ride home on these two transactions. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, Mr. Meet Agarwal, let me come across to you now. You know, from a services point of view, uh, you know, did, do you believe that more could have been done because it was a sector that was badly hit as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And let's not forget the pandemic is still not behind us. We are still in the midst of the pandemic and we are trying to sort out uh, several issues. Of course, India has taken a lead as far as COVID management first and then vaccine uh, distribution as well as vaccine development too. We are doing a fantastic job. But as far as the services sector is concerned, could more have been done? Uh, so, yes, you're right that the services sector has been the, the most badly hit uh, in the last few months. We've all been consuming more uh, products uh, versus services. I mean, we're not going to restaurants, we're not going for holidays. So, clearly, this sector, uh, these sectors related to services have been hit very badly. Certain sectors have done well in services, for example, online deliveries, logistics, and so on, uh, relatively better. So it's a, uh, it is a sector that requires a lot of support. A lot of the sector is also driven by MSMEs. And uh, so what the government has done in this budget is a lot of support to MSMEs. Some of that had already started with the announcements that the finance minister had made in the last few months uh, with the uh, uh, credit uh, schemes. Uh, but other than that, decriminalization of LMPs or allowing startups with uh, just one-person companies 
or even increasing the limits for paid up capital uh, and the uh, additional money that is being allocated to towards msme growth will also help the services sector so we have not seen any direct uh, support that is coming for any targeted uh, uh, sectors in services sector uh, industries but uh, broadly speaking i think uh, some of these uh, will certainly help the services sector all right taking the discussion forward now uh, one of the panelists uh, brought up the issue of infrastructure and how there has been a massive infrastructure push is that something uh, mr ja that can address the issue of uh, employment as well because that was a major concern area over the last 10 months well in a, <clears throat> it it would address the issue of employment because uh, but it may not address the issue of employment immediately because unless the infrastructure Uh, project uh, got off the ground immediately the people who are unemployed and uh, cmi estimates of december showed that there were about 15 million people who were uh, unemployed uh, apart from that there are many people who are employed but the quality of their employment has deteriorated so if infrastructure would definitely uh, you know give a fillip to employment but it may take a while before it does that the fact that uh, you know, the demand for manrega has gone up substantially in the past few months shows that there is a, you know huge demand for employment and people are prepared to take up whatever job uh, comes their way so all in all i think uh, you know an employment issue would be addressed but uh, it may take some time before it is addressed satisfactorily and since we are here something related to infrastructure let's talk about the power sector as well uh, mr sanjay agarwal you know uh, there has been a major push as far as the power sector is concerned there is a lot of focus on renewables and solar energy as well once again something that is in line with uh, what we have seen over the last few years how is that likely to help the economy as a whole uh frank i think uh, power sector uh, has uh, been uh, i think given uh, some uh, proper consideration this year in terms of the the sort of reform that is being looked at and the sort of financial support that is going to be made available to the discoms only on the condition that uh, they do not continue to be loss making uh, a 3 lakh uh, 3 3.05 lakh crore expenditure over the next 5 years is what is being planned and to my mind this should substantially help alleviate the difficulties in the power sector so that is something that uh, we should be looking forward to hopefully because this has been a sector which has been in perennial trouble uh, despite all the schemes that were hopefully going to take away the vows i think uh, they have worked partly and partly they still Uh, needs to be work to be done so i i believe this could be something that uh, that could help at least some of at least those states which do decide to take some positive action you know shubhamai uh, just to continue where we are at right now this is of uh, particular interest to you i know because you know you are an energy man so you know from from that perspective the especially renewables and uh, solar energy clearly you know, the budget suggests that that's the way forward for us to ensure that you know the problems that the discoms are facing try and uh, negate them try and deal with them and also give the consumers a few more choices that's right and uh, you notice a very interesting statement that she made uh, which was that uh, you know we have been talking a lot about the fact that power sector doesn't have open access what it simply means is from the consumer's point of view that consumers should have the right to decide from which power utility you buy your electricity uh this had been very strongly i mean opposed by lots of companies and this time the finance minister say that we are actually moving on that line she actually talked in fair amount of detail over the fact that the power sec that in power, that in cities uh consumers will have the right to break the monopoly uh of just single distribution company i think it's very necessary when we are talking of 24 by 7 electricity when you are talking of rights of electricity consumers then it's absolutely necessary that that right should mean the right to choose who can provide competitive electricity so pricing of electricity is is a very good place to start 
and um, i particularly took uh, i mean I, I i like that comment I mean, that, that that's something that that is something of which has been very necessary and and uh, uh, along uh, bundled along with the fact of uh, uh, renewable energy she talked about hydrogen mission which the government has already given a green signal to so that means basically what we're talking about green uh, recovery which has been a very major issue coming out of covid that the countries smart countries would take up yeah. recovery themes which would be environmentally useful that those so that that theme runs very well through the power sector reforms so all in all that that's that, that part of it i i i have i have a good reason to have uh, to say that those were uh, the right words and makes the right noises and gives and since these are budget announcements obviously these would be followed up by the government in terms of clear policies and statements through the year Absolutely, and since we are talking about may I add something to what Subhamoy said? Yeah, may please go ahead. To what Subhamoy said? Go ahead. I think what's uh, one thing that has been happening is that even though on paper there was the choice, at least to the industrial consumer, to buy uh, energy from wherever uh, that that company wishes, practically the states, individual states, have levied so many uh, haulage charges and so on and so forth, the different varieties of charges. that it has become practically impossible to have a free choice of energy so that's why i would like to second uh, subhamoy's point that it is very very important that the central government has shown a very strong intention to provide the consumer the choice to to buy power whom to buy from absolutely all right so vinita agarwal let me bring you in and you know uh, subhamoy was talking about green uh, recovery let's talk about the v shaped recovery as well something that has been spoken about of late over the last uh, uh, few weeks so is it safe to say that the worst is behind us what is it that we need to brace for going forward uh we have seen a lot of positives in the last few months i mean um today's figures of gst collection being high uh, railway freight increasing auto sector doing well power generation uh, or power demand being very high uh, these are all indicators towards uh, uh, a recovery now that recovery needs to be sustainable sustained uh, going forward we are right now in a sort of a v shaped recovery but uh, that v shaped recovery should not become a w shape uh, we should not fall down so that continuation would mean that some of this uh, uh, announcements that have been made today uh, as part of the budget the execution starts right away some of this uh, uh, has to be we have to start delivering on this as soon as possible because uh, if we have to move away and take advantage of the fact that the rest of the world is not doing as well as we are uh, and the fact that we have a very strong vaccination program that is uh, started and will be underway that confidence building measure has started and that confidence building measure will certainly help us now sustain that recovery so i am quite confident that some of this will come back but the action needs to be continuous and uh, relentless Absolutely. All right. Taking the discussion forward now, Mr. Jha, another key highlight area I would think would be um, health sector. You know, 137 percent increase really as far as budget allocation is concerned. Something that was expected considering what we saw over the last 10 months and seeing what kind of an impact the pandemic has had uh, across the globe. India deciding to uh, better uh, healthcare services across the uh, across the country as well. Clearly, a welcome sign. Yeah, it definitely is. Given that the given the fact that we were uh, struck by this pandemic for the past uh, many months, but uh, you know, here what worries me really is that uh, the revised estimates, overall revised estimates of expenditure for the current financial year, and the budget estimates for 21-22 are almost identical. See, in the current year, the the revised estimate is. 34.50 lakh crores and the following year 21 22 it is 34.83 lakh crores so there is uh, you know the extra money uh, expenditure where where it is going to come from and whether that uh, that kind of money will be available that's the first point the second issue is that health is really a state subject so the it is far better in my view to empower the states to spend the money because they would be in a better position 
to essentially ensure that whatever facilities are being created are at, right at the grassroots level, which can be monitored by, by them at the grassroots level. The, the other point which is not connected with health, and if, with your permission, if I may mention it, it is that, uh, see, that, uh, there is a huge number of items on which custom tariffs have been imposed. Hmm. Uh, if you take that in conjunction with what has been done over the last couple of years, it shows that a very large number of uh, items, uh, the custom tariffs have been uh, introduced. Right. Now, this, this is not particularly good for uh, exports, uh, for growth of exports. And I'm not very sure how this is going to be reconciled with that. Okay. Let me get closing comments in from all the other panelists as well. I've got very limited time. I've got about two minutes on the program. So I'm asking you to be, I'm, I request you to be brief, starting first with you, uh, Mr. Sanjay Garwal. Well, you see, overall, I would say that the budget uh, is on the on the lines that we requested or rather, rather expecting the budget to be, and I think uh, that is a positive. Uh, one or two aspects that uh, we still feel need a lot of uh, consideration still is uh, specifically regarding the uh, telecommunication sector, for which we have not seen much. I think uh, all this pandemic has taught uh, us is the huge... Uh, uh, role that the telecom uh, sector has played in mm -hmm. facing up to this pandemic. And uh, we are not seeing any major moves on the side of telecommunication uh, industry. I think that needs to be taken care of in the sense that we have to ensure that despite the announcements that have been made earlier, right. we have not been able to really reach optical fiber sure. to every village as we wanted. So that is one part. The second part. I'm is going to cut you short, Mr. Agarwal, because I have to get in com okay. comments from the others as well. Uh, Shubhamoy? Okay. Well, I like the fact that the numbers in the budget this time are transparent and honest. Making of budget borrowings as part of the budget is something which the market likes. And this is a very good point to start off a budget, uh, fiscal year. Essentially, that's very good. There's also an important part that the government is now going to spend about 28% uh, of its money for this year mm. in the next three months. There's a huge demand boost that's coming. However, um, that was a, it'll be an interesting thing to see what it, what it does for the rest of the economy. And I don't think the idea that budgets should go around pleasing sectors is a good idea particularly. Okay. It actually creates distortions. All so right. it's a state of it. my good idea. All right. And Vineet Agarwal, please close the show for us with your concluding remarks. Um, well, I certainly believe that the whole aspect of uh, this fiscal expansion with the expenditure on CapEx related uh, versus revenue expenditure is uh, brilliant in terms of uh, long term future for our uh, country. Uh, the infrastructure pipeline bill is, is critical, is key. Uh, the challenge will remain execution. You've seen that in the past also. Uh, there have been some uh, great plans that uh, originated but not concluded. So execution, execution, and execution will be critical. Absolutely. I think that's a very critical point that you raised. And on that note, I'd like to call it a wrap on this edition of, uh, of this special telecast. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.